16th Division Commander Nakajima has been quoted as having said, our policy is to take no prisoners. A 30th Brigade order that reads, no unit may take prisoners of war unless so instructed by the division has also been cited. These were misinterpreted and taken out of context to the point where the prevailing interpretation became Japanese policy was to immediately execute all enemy combatants who surrendered. In connection with this topic, I would like to present Mr. Inagaki Kiyoshi's film of a prison camp and hear his testimony about how prisoners of war were actually handled. At the time, Mr. Inagaki was a veterinary officer attached to the 16th Division. Please tell us where the prison camp you saw was located and how many prisoners it accommodated. I touched upon this earlier, but before we entered Nanking through Zongshan Gate, we had been bivouacking at Shang Ki Lingmen, about 10 kilometers from Zongshan Gate. I think the detention camp was directly in front of our camp. You will know this is true because I took some 9.5 millimeter film with my putty baby camera. This was a French camera, a forerunner of 8 millimeter cameras. About how many prisoners were detained there? I don't know for certain because I never counted them, but I think there were somewhere between 800 and 1,000 of them. Were they wearing uniforms or civilian clothing? They were all wearing uniforms. Then was the transport regiment guarding the prison camp? Yes, according to my records, that was on December the 16th. Our transport regiment was ordered to provide guards for the prison camp. Perhaps I'm showing my ignorance, but my impression was that the transport units are not combat units. Wouldn't it have been easy for the prisoners in their custody to escape? Exactly. We were divided into 30 details each led by a private first class or a corporal. There were six squads. The detail and squad commanders had cavalry rifles that were about 10 centimeters shorter than the more common Type 38 rifle used by the infantry. Cavalrymen used them when on horseback. Only detail and squad commanders had them. There were only 36 rifles. 14 or 15 men were assigned to sentry duty. One of them, who is still alive and lives in Kyoto, told Professor Higashi Nakano that by morning, half the prisoners had escaped. What a cavalier attitude. But I think it was a mistake to entrust transport regiment members like us with security at a prison camp. My guess is that they figured if the prisoners are going to escape anyway, we might as well put the transport regiment in charge of them. And I'm not the only one who thinks so. I've heard Imamura Kozo in Kyoto say the same thing. I'm a little surprised. What you said seems almost funny. Listen, I'm sure there was a huge gap between what the men on the front line were thinking and what those of us in the rear were thinking. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but that's the way it was. Please tell us about the prisoners of war at Anjuan in Huzhou. Afterwards, there was a battle at Shuzhou in May. This is the famous conflict that Hino Ashihei wrote about in his Soldier Trilogy. It happened the day before we reached Shuzhou. As a matter of fact, 
We left Nanking and at Anjuan, 189 soldiers surrendered to us. I filmed them with my 8mm camera. Most of them were farmers from Shandong, the province adjoining Shuzhou. I don't think there was one proper soldier amongst them, so we took prisoners. The majority of them were drafted when they came from Shandong seeking seasonal work. Following the commanding officer's orders, we detained all of them and did body checks. It was very unpleasant for us because they were filthy and crawling with lice. Since we had to move on, we turned them over to a guard unit, which released all of them that night. We didn't harm any of them. Thank you very much. Now we'll show you the video taken by Mr. Inagaki. It's a movie clip filmed by Mr. Inagaki at that time. This is 8mm film. I shot it between the time I departed from Nanking and my return home to Kyoto in August 1939. That's Jijinshan in the background. In front is the military academy where the 6th Company Transport Regiment was quartered. There were 350 men in our company and 426 horses. When you multiply those numbers by six, there were six companies, and add regimental headquarters staff, the total is quite high. These are barracks. These were our quarters. Those are reserve horses at the rear. The men with the rifles on their shoulders are the detail and squad commanders. This is a village where we camped. This was filmed during the march to Nanking. Here we're finally approaching Nanking. The city walls are in sight. This is probably near Shangqi Lingmen. You can see our camp. These are trucks moving toward the front line. That's Ohara, a medic. That's me. That's Ohara and Warrant Officer Hota, a medical corpsman. I don't remember where this was taken. I filmed this outside Nanking. This is the sign for the prisoner detention camp. I remember that a lot of enemy prisoners were housed in a large building. I have still photographs of this, too. Here is our entry into Nanking. <coughs> this is one of Nanking's gates. We entered through Zongshan Gate. This is me. This is part of Zongshan Gate that was demolished. This is our unit entering Nanking. The man waving is my aide, Murayama. I shot this inside the city. This is my unit marching inside the city. This is my unit in formation. 
The bearded man is Sergeant Major Takayama. This is from our company. This is a light tank unit, the Fujita unit. These are our two squad commanders. This is the Nanking Wharf, where military supplies were loaded and unloaded. These are military supplies, ammunition, or perhaps fuel. This is flotsam from the Yangtze River. I never saw any corpses there. This is a flock of magpies on a dead tree outside Nanking. The magpies here were much smaller than the ones in Japan. That's a Japanese aircraft. This is Jijinshan viewed from the military academy. I don't remember what this building was. This is the part of the city wall that leads to Xiangwu Lake. I think that's the bridge that spans Xiangwu Lake. This is one of the nationalist government buildings. 16th Division headquarters were located here. I visited here several times. This is the 16th Regiment's Joint Memorial Service, held after the battle ended. This was filmed the day before the battle at Shuzhou. This shows 189 enemy soldiers raising their arms and surrendering. This is exactly how it happened. They're all holding pieces of white cloth against their chests. As you can see, there's not one proper soldier there. They hadn't received any training at all. We had an awful time because they were covered with lice, although we had lice too. We had to move on, so we turned the prisoners over to a guard unit. They were all released at night. Thank you very much for sharing that precious footage.